Dear Zendaya, I got sunshine on a cloudy day. Ooh. I, Anthony Aiken Jr., am sorry. I have not watched Euphoria yet. And I feel responsible for my lack of progression in life. And that will change today. Okay, because 2020 has been a very bad year. I get the logic behind it, but it's still like fucking insane. 2020 is like getting assigned a group project and you get paired up with that one classmate that you know damn well ain't doing no work. That's 2020 in a nutshell. However, Zendaya has been a ray of sunshine. Okay, she has provided us with much serotonin happiness, nutrients, vitamins to make our skin clear, to make our voices heard. And she recently won an Emmy. Yes. Zendaya, Euphoria. There is hope in, in the young people. Emmy Award at 24. The youngest to do it, okay? Not to mention one of two black women to do it. And I couldn't be more proud to finally watch Euphoria today. Okay, so Euphoria follows a group of high school students as they navigate love and friendships in a world of drugs, sex, trauma, and social media. It's executively produced by Drake. How much time is this nigga spending on the intro? Let's begin Euphoria. I was once happy, content, over and over by the cruel cervix of my mother, Leslie. I put up a good fight, but I lost. I mean, you're a baby, so you're not technically supposed to win. I was born three days after 9-11. We all remember where we were when 9-11 happened, so to be born during it is a whole different experience. Watching those towers fall over and over again until the feelings of grief gave way to numbness. Blue, look at me. Why? Funny, interesting, and creative people have struggled with the same things you struggle with. Like who? Britney Spears. Not sure if these are the best examples, but we'll continue. Until every second of every day you find yourself trying to outrun your anxiety. That is amazing storytelling, especially when she says every day you find ways to outrun your anxiety. Usually your anxiety already has your mind racing. <laughs> So to outrun it would be to beat it in the race and become victorious, you know? Everyone wants to overcome the anxiety, but to outrun it, the thought of it creates more anxiety. I'm just fucking exhausted. I'm getting one. In my bathroom under the sink. I did have the exam 13 hours till I land, had me out like a light. Like a light. Like a light. Like a light. I'm sorry. Room, did you eat breakfast? Put in the comment section where you used to sit on the bus. I used to always sit in the back, usually rap battling. I didn't build this system, nor did I fuck it up. The camera work there, the way it was panning from the ceiling down to her forehead, and then you notice that she's snorting. Who was on crack? And now we have a party scene here. Everything stops. Your heart, your lungs. Okay, so the red and blue lights to me is supposed to resemble some sort of emergency. I remember the first time it happened to me, I got so scared I wanted to call 911, but I didn't want to look like an idiot. I didn't want to fuck up everyone's night. Oh, the use of the songs there, you have the original sample of the Beyonce Hold Up record. And in the original, they say there's no escape. And then in Beyonce's version, it's Hold Up, They Don't Love You Like I Love You. And I'm guessing based on the first five, six minutes of Euphoria, that's supposed to be her love for an escape. I spent a good portion of the summer before junior year in rehab. The courage to change the things I can. 
Okay, so Rue is not having it at all. She has this deadly glare in her eyes. And in this scene, you see the protagonist, Rue. She walks up to the casket, and in the casket, they have a mirror, which is supposed to be a message, a FYI, hey, this could be you. You're about to start a brand new chapter. I had no intention of staying clean. And Jules had just moved to town. Okay, so this girl on the bike is probably going to be a prominent character. Just from the look Rue has when staring at her. I'm thinking to myself, like, look like somebody Rue would get along with. How long you been back? I mean, ever since I gave my life over to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, things have been, like, really good. I thought your ass was dead. Oh, they got the sriracha on deck. And does this kid have a face tattoo or am I tripping? So what the fuck you want? I will go ask him because I know you're full of shit. That little boy needs his ass whooped. Okay, straight up. Old school style. I'm talking Joe Jackson. Bop, bop, bop. Well, I think we'll be able to get it out, but you won't be able to wear that shoe again. Face tattoos and everything. Boy, if you don't go to school and watch SpongeBob SquarePants. The truth is I didn't have much of an issue with Nate until all the bullshit with Jules. It's America. I don't know, bro. You know my mom is real OCD. She notices the smallest shit. A little scratch on the wall. The dishes are out of order. Is it Maddie coming tonight? No, bro, because she's crazy. I don't want her to come and try to burn my house down. Okay, so I'm currently editing, but I just think it's funny rewatching it how he was worried about the house burning down, but she did the nasty in the pool. She was cooling off in a different way. His parents gonna be sick once they take a swim. Okay, so shout out to everyone who didn't have the American movie TV show lifestyle of being a teenager and throwing a house party while your parents weren't in attendance. I wouldn't dare. Absolutely not. Also, shout out to Al G. Smith. That's the homie, man. He a douchebag. He is a certified F-boy. She doesn't really like to talk about it, but dads almost never get full custody, so you know some shit definitely went down. Okay, so we got the high school vibes. They got the projector screen on and popping. Y'all remember when they used to roll out the TV on wheels and you know Bill Nye, the science guy, is coming? I mean, technically, he taught us the algorithms that has, you know, a lot of these kids out here serving it up. He taught us these equations. Can you not be a cop for like 15 seconds? Dad, stop being a pervert. We're literally like all naked. <laughs> Okay, so I'm really interested not only in Rue's character and obviously the mom, she's really going through it, making sure that her daughter is not taking drugs. Clearly, she tried to create a new chapter for her. So these things tend to worry a parent. I mean, what would you do in this situation? Of course, but I'm also paying attention to the other character there, okay? Her, I'm talking about the sister. I wonder what's going through her mind. There's a few ways to beat a drug test. The first is simple. Stop doing drugs. Niacin. It's a B vitamin that like breaks down fat and chemicals or whatever. And the only problem is it has a few side effects. Skin flushing, extreme dizziness, vomiting, rapid heartbeat, and sometimes death. Hey yo, what the fuck? Uh, this is random, but I love the way when she says, and oh, you might die. And then she falls on the ground and then the, the camera kind of shakes a little bit. I thought that was dope. Sad, but dope. And not dope as in drugs, dope as in good. Option three, get a non-drug addict friend of his for you. Hey, Rue. Hey, I don't need a favor. Are you serious? Please. So weird request. Hey, uh, I have a little question for you. You mind pissing in the cup for me? We're friends. How many of us have them? Hey, Rue. How was Rehab? New chapter. Mom. Hmm. Huh. 
some ways she's my best friend even though i think we've grown apart we don't really have much in common anymore that definitely tends to happen especially in high school because everybody kind of puts themselves in the category you have the athletes in one group you have the musicians in one you have the theater kids in the other group then you have the cool kids that care a lot about fashion and cracking jokes in class. And then you have the kids that love drugs. Mom, I have to pee. Thank you. And Gia, Gia who absolutely idolizes you. I know, Mom. <gasps> Okay, so earlier I said I wondered a lot about that character because she is young and she's witnessing this all and I can't imagine what that is like. And you know what's funny? They start off Euphoria with the scene where Rue is being born and they mention 9-11. I was born three days after 9-11. And she was born a few days after it and there's so much grief and... I don't know if that will come full circle in some aspects, but this is one small example of something that's shocking and that can change you in a lot of ways. I know a lot of you probably hate me right now, and I get it. I'm sorry for slamming your door earlier. Can I? Yeah, can I spend the night with Lexi tonight? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so... Rue's idea worked perfectly. The mom didn't catch on. Piss test was negative. Where are you going? Uh, I don't know, some party or something. All right, daughter, new town, be safe. Yeah, okay. Jules told me later what had happened. But looking back on it, she probably would have just been better off going to McKay's. Nothing ever good happens at the motels and movies, you know, so I just try to stay away from it all together. Get out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! This is just, this is bad. This is bad. This is very, Stephen very a. bad. Fact? No, she's not. She's not even that type of girl. Yo, what are y'all even doing out the room, man? Go back upstairs, bro. Okay, so far he's my favorite male character on the show. I'm not gonna put up with this. I'm not trying to hear all y'all toxic masculinity right now. Shut up. Oh, relax. Relax. No one gets you to the page. All right, look, I don't know what she's done, guys, but I'm just saying, I think she's cool. Yo, yo, McKay's about to start a Pinterest, guys. Just wait. <laughs> Give it a minute. Oh my God. No, God! No, God, please, no, no. That was the most, oh, uh, I hate, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna hate them already. I hate them because they twins and they literally just blew smoke. What do y'all think y'all are? Mary Kate and Ashley, huh? It's like, well, if you don't want it out there, don't take the news in the first place. Shame the assholes who create password protected online directories of naked underage girls. Yeah, Ruru. Hey, how you been? She's just being coy. Tag team. Double team. Like, I wasn't being weird, was I? Stay right here. What did I do? Why would you grab me like that? I couldn't breathe. I don't know. I thought you liked that. Okay, so pretty much there, that was a matter of perception versus reality. Uh, clearly, in the scene where this guy was in the room with all the boys and they're talking about the videos, he had his thoughts and his questions about if this girl that's in the video was the girl he was pursuing. And they're all like, yes, that's her. And remember the two little twins that were like, hey, we have a tutorial on how to do what we need to do to please her. And then he takes that video, keeps it in the back of his head, and then he's in bed with her and he ends up grabbing her a certain way, thinking she's going to like it, when in reality, she's like, what the hell are you doing? This rule that I don't drink and bike, cause like. Yeah, only cut, break, cut, no well, thank you. I'm envious of your generation, you know? You guys don't care as much about the rules. Okay, this is disgusting. Like, this dude is an absolute creep, you could tell. 
The moment I didn't even need to see him. All I needed to hear was his voice. And I don't want to be that old guy that gives you advice. Okay, so that's so sad because pretty much, you know, as she's enduring pain, Rue is saying is through conversation, this is someone who is basically filling a void. She wants to be 25 so bad. Since a kid, she's wanted to be 25. So imagine being 12 years old, wanting to be 25. That means for 13 years of your life, you're feeling a void that you're pretty much wandering aimlessly because 25 is supposed to be when you truly do start life. <laughs> Okay, so she's having a really bad trip. And the camera work, though, is incredible. Like, the way they sequence that whole scene, that is mesmerizing. You serious? Okay, so in conclusion, never have a house party because I'd be damned if this happened. Okay, I rather the situation in Stranger Things where homegirl was sitting by the pool and the Demogorgon came and just ow. You know what I'm saying? Like that that could happen at my crib because that ain't my problem. It ain't my fault you was there. Okay, you should have looked over your shoulder. Just look over your shoulders, honey. Yeah. You should have made sure there was nothing coming. But this, I'd be damned if I take a swim in my pool. Poor, poor kids' parents came back home, took a swim the next day. Didn't even know it was swimming in the water. That's disgusting. That, I, that, that, that is blasphemous. That is blasphemous. Now, Jules texted Cat, but Cat didn't answer because. Are you a slut? Yeah, I'm a fucking savage. No, Cat wasn't approved, but she was a virgin. She told Jules that a week into summer school. Why don't you come find out? That shit at the beginning of summer had me scared as fuck. This drug shit, it's not the answer. Okay, so number one, this character here seems to be a very likable one because he's really looking out for the best interest of Rue. He seems like a very real friend, like one that definitely relates to her because they both have the same issues with drug abuse. But he's coming at it from a realistic approach of, I see something special in you. I do not want you to further yourself in the trap you are in. Even despite the fact that he himself is in that trap, he doesn't have the crab in the barrel mentality of wanting her to stay in the bucket with him. And also this character reminds me of somebody, uh, an artist actually, and I'm a huge fan of the artist he reminds me of. And unfortunately that artist is not here. Uh, for those reasons so every single time i see him i just think about think about him you know? and then when i got to the hospital they gave me liquid volume because suddenly the world went quiet and i felt safe you know, she's explaining that for the first time ever she felt safe in her head and i found a way to live so will it eventually kill me maybe <laughs> Uh, maybe not. That's real classy, you fucking whore. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Is this his kitchen? Whose kitchen is th this? is exactly the issue I'm having this whole episode, okay? It's that brother's house. This brother right here. This is his parents' house. You over here telling people to get out the kitchen. They over here having sex in the pool. This is absolutely ridiculous. Do you guys know who the fuck this is? Does anybody know who this is? Leave Jules alone. No, what is he doing? What is he doing? See, if I was at the party, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I know her. These, these my peoples. What's good? What's good? Or this bitch is gonna get fucked up. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, no. no fucking idea. Oh, fucking oh, shit. By the way, I'm Jules. I just moved here. Well, that's one hell of an introduction. Damn. First and foremost, the fact that nobody stepped in is exactly why I hated high school. Uh, are you okay? Uh, 
Okay, so towards the end of a very interesting pilot episode of Euphoria, I kind of zoned out. And I forgot my camera was even on. I was just paying very close attention to everything. And one thing I noticed, everything came full circle. There was one scene in the beginning where Rue was in the backseat of a car and she's seen Jules riding on a bike. And her drug dealer friends pretty much was like, hey, y'all could be really close friends. I just get that vibe. And then later on, Outside the party, Jules and Rue, they finally meet. Rue asks Jules if they can go home together, and that's exactly what they do. And then, of course, the main shocker here is earlier there was a scene where Jules was in a motel room with an older dude, and she looked at his phone, and on the lock screen was a family portrait. That same family portrait exists when this character, this douchebag, walks upstairs, which goes to show you where the creepy and toxic behavior comes from. It stems all the way up at the top of the food chain of that family. Overall, I was very impressed with the visuals. More than anything, uh, whoever was in charge of the camera work did an absolutely amazing job being innovative, especially in the scene where Rue is tripping out. The way they did the camera work and just the overall aesthetic of Euphoria, that was the most impressive part to me. Um, Zendaya's acting is great. And I can go on for days and days and days telling y'all how amazing Zendaya is. So I'm just going to leave you with this quote from me. Zendaya has been a ray of sunshine, okay? She has provided us with much serotonin, happiness, nutrients, vitamins to make our skin clear, to make our voices heard, and she recently won an Emmy. Yes, Zendaya, Euphoria. There is hope in in the young people. If y'all want to see more Euphoria takes, more Zendaya takes, Feel free to subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment below. Follow me on social media, Anthony96JR. And as always, if you're new to my channel, we end off with a hug. I get whiplash slow I kick bad habits at the kickback though In other words, I tick my ex like tic-tac-toe It's a trick, silly rabbit, where the kids at, yo? I can reminisce, I'm so naive and in love with the leaves and seeds that grow trees and the doves and believe she a demogorgon creature to love. I'm covering my heart with the sleeve and the glove. Stranger things three, then she leave when I'm up. We all about the money, now we sleep and we fuss. For the love of money, for a milli, I'll be down. I'll be sure to kill them demons like a Millie Bobby Brown. Uh.